What's the energy? <laughs> Only one video. <laughs> I can make it. We can do it. Yeah, All right. So hi, I'm Dr. Nikita Visniak with the amazing Dr. Catherine Chow. And today we are going to talk about end feels or end plays of the body. So when you're doing range of motion assessment, whether it's active, passive, resisted, we're always dealing with end ranges. What does the tissue actually feel like? Actually a very diagnostic tool for us to use and also therapeutic in a lot of cases as well. So to start with, our first and most common end feel of the body is? It's going to be a soft tissue, tissue <laughs> stretch. Say that like 10 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and essentially it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a soft tissue, which is any muscle or ligaments and how it stretches. It can be anywhere literally in the body, fingers, hands, neck. Most people can feel it in their hamstrings when you're doing a little bit of a stretch and then you can't go too far past it because it hurts too much and it might be dangerous for you. Yeah, but people. for some people it would be if they go into yeah. it too fast. Absolutely. Yeah. So a couple of key things to get for soft tissue stretch. Number one, what are the soft tissues that you stretch? Most people think it's going to be muscle, 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 which it absolutely is. Mm -hmm but it's also fascia, ligaments, blood vessels, nerves, all of these things get stretched, lymphatics, all of this gets stretched together, so realize that all makes up part of that soft tissue stretch. We'll toss up a little graph of the different end ranges that you can see here as part of this learning opportunity for everyone. Now the next end feel that we have to talk about is soft tissue approximation, and I think Dr. Chung has got a great example of this. A great example is the elbow, or even the knee, but the elbow is a great example. Soft tissue approximation just means that your, the joint can actually move um, so it's full range of motion only because you have soft tissue in the way like a giant bicep. Like these massive biceps right, right here. Yeah. Technically we could go further but they stop because the pipes run into the forearms right exactly. here, right? So that'll be a prime example right mm -hmm. there. Other places you see it, knee flexion like Dr. Chung mentioned, also hip flexion. If you come all the way up it's going to be limited potentially as well because you run into soft tissue mass. Mm -hmm. Next end feel of the body we have is ligamentous and ligamentous end feel, the prime example for that would actually be the patient's knee. So if you take somebody's knee and you go to straighten it out, the knee is a relatively flat tibial condyles up the top or upper part tibial plateau and you have femoral condyles coming down so the only thing that prevents this from extending further is actually the ligaments getting tight so that would be a ligamentous end feel. I also challenge ligaments when I go ahead and do a valgus or vera stress test. Those tests are designed to check the ligament integrity so that would be a ligamentous end feel. And the last one we have on the list is a bone on bone. So bone on bone end feel is kind of interesting. So this one is your olecranon would lock into the olecranon fossa is the prime example that everybody gives. But it's a bit of a lie because what do you actually do? You lock this bone into that bone for sure but then you prevent the rest of this elbow from extending because you're looking at the ligaments at the front getting tight. And a prime example of this would be if I can just borrow your arm, we'll borrow this arm right here. Yeah. Or we can take it from jujitsu, you can do an arm bar. We oh, can with that. absolutely, oh, yeah. nope. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so just a couple of things for us to realize though. When we're in this position right here, what actually happens? As Dr. Chung lifts her hips up, oh, especially if she really locks it in, yeah. take it easy, but she lifts up, 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 up. Right there, that fulcrum of force is actually causing the ligaments on the front of my elbow to be stretched out, and that potentially is what's going to lead to ligamentous end feel and even ligamentous rupture if you win the match. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Me there. Oh, man, dang. All right. So those are our normal end feels of the body. For Jiu Jitsu, just on a side note, if you're doing any kind of grappling sport, you can win by submission and the submission can be by either tap or I'm going to tear your ligaments apart. Okay? Also if you knock somebody out you can do it as well but we'll go ahead and move on from there. So now we're going to get into pathologic end feels and our first pathologic end feel is a bone on bone. But you're saying, wait a minute Dr. Nick, you just told me bone on bone was a normal end feel. Yes, technically this is normal range of motion and I get a normal end feel there but it can be pathologic where you should have a soft tissue stretch or approximation end feel that you don't get to mm -hmm. because bone hits bone. And a prime example there is going to be... Osteoarthritis, I see it a lot in clinic and essentially it's that, uh, that chronic um, phase of the osteoarthritis where the cartilage is actually just worn off and you have just bone on bone and that's where a lot of that pain is, especially with overuse, it's just because it's just rubbing on top of each, on the bone and just like... Yeah, rubbing. Yeah, exactly. And so that bone on bone end feel can be there where it's bone physically in contact because the cartilage has been worn down or you can have massive osteophyte formation mm -hmm. where the bones actually reach an end range and don't go any further because the osteophytes are so large. And an extreme example of this would be DISH or diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperexhaustosis. If you don't know it, look it up. I can put up a little cadaver video of it here or an x-ray of it as well so you can see it. But at the end of the day, that's an extreme example of bone on bone end feel that would be pathologic. Mm -hmm. All 
All right, what's our next end field, Dr. Chung? Muscle spasm. And when do we see muscle spasms? Muscle spasm tends to be when you have an instability of the joint, perhaps, um, like the shoulder will say, and if you go into an apprehension test, so Dr. Nick can show an apprehension, a GH apprehension, if there's an instability there, your muscle really wants to guard and hold that down, and you might start feeling some muscle spasms if you go a little bit too far or push that muscle too much, or you just feel that feedback where the, there's, there's just a lot of guarding because of that instability. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good point right there. So a muscle spasm and feel is the body is concerned whether it's real or not in some cases it may not be but in a lot of cases you've had an injury and you don't want to move any further because the body thinks it's going to cause further injury or dislocation I know when I dislocated my shoulder the furthest I could move it was here to here and that would have been it right after the dislocation after rehab of course full shoulder range of motion is back there but when you're looking at this muscle spasm is the body's protective mechanism whenever you have an injury and it's kind of what we see for most of our patients actually is muscle spasm if you're doing massage therapy or any kind of pain management for anybody, you're working through that muscle tightness in a lot of cases. Yeah. All right. What's our next end field, Dr. Chung? Next end field is capsular. All right. And where do we see capsular? Anywhere that you have a capsule. Okay. Anywhere <laughs> that you have a capsule. What's the best example? The best example is going to be a shoulder again, especially frozen shoulder, where there's going to be a lot of inflammation and there's a multiple directional limited ranges of motion. Yeah. And that's the key thing to get there. If it's a capsular end field, that means that it is multi-directional loss of range of motion. That means the whole joint capsule itself has become inflamed and enlarged, and if you do biopsies or if you're in the frozen phase of adhesive capsulitis, that's where we tend to see this kind of capsular end feel. Mm -hmm. The next one we can see is called a boggy end feel. In this one, the best example I can give you, it's like a wet sponge. So we'll use the knee again here, for example. So we'll say that Dr. Chung has gone and hurt her knee, and if she hurts her knee, it swells up a little bit, and when you go to push it into an end range, you spring into it and it kind of bogs back. It's got that kind of spongy sensation that you want to get with it or that you'll feel with it. So boggy, spongy type of an end feel. In severe cases, you can even have some pitting edema or swelling there where you take and squeeze it and then you can see the fluid flow back into that space. So that'll be a boggy type end feel. The next one is going to be a springy block. Can you tell us about that one, Dr. Chong? Yeah, and this is most specific for meniscus uh, tears or meniscus period and it's just because of how the meniscus is lying and then when it's injured or torn it can fold back on itself and it's this is also in the knee as well um, which Dr. Nick will show you. Yeah so if you push into it you can see that you push into it and you would spring and then it bounces back where you've pinched the meniscus and then it bounces back out of that position so that'll be an example of a springy block. Ideally with a real patient setup of course you'd be up on the table mm -hmm. with the leg a little bit higher like this you can use like a bounce home test mm -hmm. or anything like that where you let them drop in just a little bit and they'll just bounce right back out okay of course you want to be going from least invasive to most invasive for your assessment so start off nice and light with patient consent yeah. of course yeah we t I talk to my students all the time when they teach them that bounce home test and they just they hold the leg and then they just let it go yeah well, it's a big no <laughs> yeah big no big no absolutely all right the next one on the list that we have is an empty or absent end feel so let's make sure that we've got this clear what is an empty end feel if I can borrow your hand for a second it's where you would take a digit or wherever it is and you go to put into its end range and where it should have stopped it just keeps on going that is an empty or absent end feel where you see an abnormal end feel that shouldn't be there and that's usually secondary to ligament disruption or dislocation now there is a pet peeve I have around this there are some sources <coughs> David McGee <coughs> who's got them out there as an absent end feel means the patient didn't let you do it all right so if I was to take your blood pressure or if I was to do an exam and you didn't let me do it, I wouldn't write down empty envy or empty blood pressure or uh, absent blood pressure, all right? It is a did not complete, okay? So if the patient doesn't allow you to do these things and it's within their right to do that as part of your informed consent, then you write DNC, did not complete that portion of exam. It absolutely positively is not an absent end feel or an empty end feel. Empty end feel is full rupture of ligament and then I keep on going beyond that or where I should have normal soft tissue stretch and I keep on going beyond that. Those are examples of empty or absent end feels. So not lack of consent. Not lack of consent. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then the last thing to realize as you guys are going through and learning your end feels, there's multiple different ways to find it in different areas in the body. But the key thing to realize and we'll put up a stress strain graph right here for you to look at is as I load tissue with every serial loading, I get a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more flexibility. But after about three times of running through it, that's when you get to your normal end range. So if I'm going to check somebody's end range, let's even say it was for the wrist, I would go ahead and be here and extend her wrist back, 
bring it out, load again, and then you're slowly loosening up the tissue, warming up a little bit of the tissue with a little bit more blood flow, you get a more accurate assessment on that second or third movement than you do on the first movement. Mm -hmm. So make sure when you're doing your assessments, you're checking multiple times in the same area to make sure it wasn't just tightness in the tissue. And an example of this always is when we get up in the morning, what does everybody do? You stretch, you move around a little bit, what are you doing? You're loosening up that tissue. Well, if I did my end range assessment before you were warmed up, what would happen? I'd get an abnormal end range. Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, uh, please leave it below. And if there are any contents that you actually want us to create a video for and you're really interested in, also leave a comment down below. All right. Fantastic. And also go ahead and check out our books and online CE courses and anything else we can do to help you be better at what you do. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.